Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan and someone's just started up <laughs> mowing the lawn. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Are we keeping you up? <laughs> now today we're at the town of Romsey in Hampshire which is a few miles to the now northwest of Southampton and we're going to be doing a roughly three and a half mile circular route to the north of the town following the path of an old canal going through a lovely nature reserve and seeing a few other interesting things along the way, including a restored signal box. Well, I parked my car at the uh, Crossfield Hall car park, which is in the centre of Romsey. There are quite a few car parks in the town. This one is um, it's free on Sundays. Now, before we kick off and uh, head into the, the countryside, as it were, there's a handy little map here. Now, that's where we're parked. Our sort of walk into the countryside starts there by a, a theatre. We head up by the side of a, a canal. But I want to show you a few things in Romsey itself. So we're going to walk along here, uh, go to the market, squ uh, market um, square, uh, and then have a quick look at the Romsey Abbey. And then we're going to have a little wander down this road. There's a few things I want to show you there in the War Memorial Park as well. And then we'll head on back and start the walk properly. Okay, so we're just going to start uh, walking into Marketplace. And just on my right here, we've got the White Horse, which is, um, or dates possibly back as far as 1450. Indeed, it was built on the site of an earlier medieval inn. The stone cellar still survives for that. Let's have a little wander around here. It's still relatively quiet I'm filming on uh, Sunday morning 20 to 9 according to the clock on the Abbey in the far distance there let's see what else we can find just here on the right the Romsey Working Men's Conservative Club site of the old Swan Inn which is one of the oldest pubs in town and uh, see there's a plaque here that tells us that there we go, recorded in the year 1642, two soldiers of Cromwell's army were hanged from the wrought iron sign bracket on this wall. I know Romsey itself has been known as a, a brewing town. Apparently in 1911, there were something like 80 pubs here, one for every 150 residents. And the chap here on the plinth is Lord Palmerston, who was Prime Minister in the 19th century, who lived at nearby Broadlands. And just over there is the rather magnificent Town Hall that was built in 1866. So let's go and have a look at the Abbey. Well, I know this is a very much a countryside walk video, so we're not going to have too much time to have a look at uh, the Abbey itself. But it is pretty impressive. I'm approaching it from the south side here. Look at that. And this is the largest parish church in Hampshire. Uh, the original abbey was built in the 10th century and then built in 1140 AD. It's actually called the Church of St Mary and St Ethelflader, I think. <laughs> hope I pronounced that right. And just here there's a, a magnificent uh, monument what does that say erected in commemoration of the victorious battle of waterloo goodness me june 1815 okay well let's have a little wander around i'm going to struggle to get the <laughs> the building in my camera lens the whole way well when the dissolution of monasteries came round in 1539 the abbey escaped it, it wasn't destroyed or demolished because a significant part of it was the uh, place of worship for the town. So in 1544, the town actually bought the building off the crown. 
I don't know what happened to the nuns though. Now this is the south side of the building, working my way up across. And 1348, 1349, Black Death hit Romsey and half the population and died, including 80% of the nuns that lived here. And just here again, this is on the the south side, we've got this, it's called the Romsey Rood, I believe. It's on the western wall of the south transept, probably early 11th century, removed from the chancel arch of the Anglo-Saxon church, but it's about six foot nine inches tall. It's a little unusual, it's obviously uh, Jesus on the cross, but there's no sign of any nails in his hands. And this is the view from the the eastern side. The building was remodelled and restored in the 19th century. I think it's got eight bells. Of course the Earl Mountbatten of Burma tomb is actually inside. He was uh, the uncle of Prince Philip and of course died in 1979, assassinated by the IRA. He had a state funeral at Westminster Abbey before being buried here. And then finally, this is on the northern side those terrific old wooden doors. One on the right's quite, uh, quite small, I reckon. Well, certainly under five foot. What's that say on the door? 1739. And if I gradually step back, and you get an idea of the uh, sheer size of this building. And then just over to this side, one of the main entrances. But it really is smashing. And over on this side here there's a cross in the centre of uh, some green space. But uh, oh, it really is quite terrific. I must point out I've just noticed the little bit of the abbey on the southern side it says no dogs. I didn't notice that. You can have dogs on the uh, eastern side. So apologies there, Logan was on a lead. Well just by the abbey is uh, a building called the Folly House which was the old vicarage built in uh, the 1850s and you can see the top right hand corner of the wall there there's a, a shield. It's a logo of the bishopric of Winchester uh, St. Peter represented by keys and St. Paul represented by a sword. And this panning round is a quite magnificent looking oak tree there. Okay, so we're just going to head on. There's just one more thing that I want to show you before we head out of Romsey itself, and that's the War Memorial Garden. Well, the last thing I want to show you in Romsey is the War Memorial Park that was created in 1920, obviously uh, uh, remembering those that died in the First World War. And just behind me here is the actual war memorial itself, which was uh, erected or unveiled in 1921. And then if I just pan round, there's some green railings there. That's the, uh, there's a, well, part of the River Test that uh, flows behind that. It's a lovely part. The, well, to improve drainage of this, what was once a very wet field, they brought hard core up from the nearby remount cap where horses were trained in the war. It was a huge camp that uh, housed something like 5,000 horses and 2,000 men. And horses from the USA and Ireland as well as the UK came into the country at Devonport and were transported to Romsey by train uh, and then shipped out to France via Southampton after they'd finished their training here. Well the camp wasn't needed after the war so all the buildings were demolished and a lot of the rubble is uh, well, buried underneath the lawns here. But just behind me here there's this terrific uh, bronze statue of a, a soldier and uh, his horse. Uh, again this is uh, done to commemorate the contribution made by horses and mules in the First World War. The bronze is by local artist Amy Goodman and was commissioned and 
unveiled by the Princess Royal in 2015. And finally, just on the western edge of the park, is this, uh, well, as you can see, it's uh, a World War II Japanese field gun presented to the town in 1946 by Rear Admiral the Viscount Mountbatten of Burma. And it looks in pretty good condition today. Well, we've made our way out of the, the town itself and just by this uh, rather marvellous Art Deco building, the Plaza. It was built in 1931. It's now a 230-seat theatre. Originally it was a cinema and became a bingo hall in 1970 until the 1980s. And then in 1984 it was converted to what it is now, which is home to an amateur dramatics group. Anyway, we're going to wander along the side of it and now going to head out into the countryside at last along this uh, canal path. I'm delighted to say the sun is beginning to peek out from the clouds. I'm filming in late September so we are into the autumn now but it's 14-15 oh, degrees or so so good for walking in. Okay so we're now following this canal which uh, looks a little bit overgrown at the moment but we'll see a bit more of it as we head on with the walk. It's one of the few remaining stretches of a canal that uh, well, once ran from Andover to Redbridge, where it joined the Southampton Water. It was completed in 1794, and it's 22 miles long, and could take boats 20 metres long and about two and a half metres wide. Mainly agricultural goods south and coal and building materials north. Now, like a lot of canals in the south of England, it was never a success. And it was eventually bought by a couple of railway companies and it was closed in 1859. Now about 14 and a half miles of the canal to the north of Mottisfont was filled in and used as the track bed for the Spratt and Winkle railway line which was a line opened in 1865 between Andover and Southampton. But that closed as well in the 1960s as a result of the beaching cuts. So this section of the canal which we'll be following was never actually filled in as was left to wildlife and quite a lot of blackberries as well. Well just by the side of the canal, just as you head out of Romsey, you'll come across this terrific restored signal box which is just behind me here. Isn't that wonderful? The original box was built in 1865 and the current box built in 1871 and until 1982 it actually controlled the junction at Romsey with trains running from Salisbury to Southampton and a, a branch line down to Eastleigh. But re-signalling works by British Rail meant it was no longer needed. It was saved from demolition, bought for £10 I think, and then moved to the side of the main track and restored but it's now a museum and run by a trust. But uh, it really does look quite glorious. We're well, just making our way along the canal still. Uh, you can see a little bit more of it down there. We're going underneath a bridge that uh, goes underneath the existing railway line. So we're gonna get a little bit echoey for a while. <laughs> Continuing our wander along the side of the canal, just going underneath a bridge that uh, goes um, underneath one of the main main roads. Oh, there's some terrific murals here. 
underneath the uh, under the bridge. Terrific. And that's a good old map there. Interesting seeing Old Strong's Brewery. There was an advert on old advertising sign back at the signal box for Strong's. They were um, well, back in 1858. A chap called Thomas Strong bought a brewery in Romsey and renamed it uh, Strong's. It was very successful, but it was bought out by Whitbreads in 1969, and brewing ceased in the town in 1981. It is quite glorious now. The sun out, There's some fantastic views. So alongside the canal, looking out across to the nature reserve managed by the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust on behalf of the Test Valley Borough Council. It's about 60 hectares in total. I love those bulrushes out there as well. And apparently there are 24 species of dragonflies and damselflies here. I have seen uh, a couple on the path actually. And if I just pan round, we can have a look at the canal as you can see in, in parts it's quite wide and clear I can see the uh, the bottom without any problem and there's a little flow to it as well so I'm wondering if it's uh, it, it fed in some way from the river test and uh, oh, I can see a few fish in there just showing how clear it is beautiful wow look at that property up there with the the balcony and what some fantastic views they must get if I just pan round slowly. That's not a bad view to look across, is it? Very lucky. Well, definitely time to cool down. <laughs> As it's lovely and clear here as well. And they've got some little dog steps to use, although Logan thinks it's best to use the bank. Oh, isn't that beautiful over there with the uh, the blue intermingling with the greens and then the reflection on the water. This part of the canal here is very, very pretty. And there's a nice solid path alongside, so it's never going to get muddy in the winter. It's quite delightful. Well, we're now going to say goodbye to the canal which is just heading north by me there and now we're going to start heading west across the um, the water meadows across some of those on our walk down the uh, River Itch in, uh, at Shawford. I think those are the um, British Whites with their lovely black noses and little uh, black spots on their white bodies and those, <laughs> those gorgeous black ears. We've now reached an important part of the walk if you're following this and, and going to be doing it in the future. Um, you have the option here of either, I just pan around while Logan's eating some blackberries, you can carry on a down that path there which takes you back to the town across the meadow or as we're going to do keep going a little bit further westwards over this little bridge that's going to take us along an, a small footpath that, that'll pass the river and then we'll have to follow a road for a little bit, but I think it's worth doing this path just for the river, to be honest. Wow, isn't this stunning? I say this is, well, the main river test flows just a 
few hundred yards or so to the west of here. So this is a channel that comes off it that goes into the uh, town and then eventually joins up with the test again. But isn't that brilliant with the sun coming through the trees and the reflections? It really is quite beautiful here. And I love this chalk stream where it's so clear the water and you can see the the gravel on the bottom and I can see a few fish as well. Ah, a little piece of heaven. very much on the homeward leg now. We're going to say goodbye to the river and heading back into town. I'm just going to follow a, an A road that's going to take us there. It takes us past what used to be a world of water or Romsey world of water. Unfortunately that closed after 36 years of trading earlier this year which is a shame because it used to have a really nice cafe there. Well now I'm right near the end heading back into the outskirts of Romsey, squinting in this beautiful sunshine. And I've just got some industrial estates behind me, so that's a sign that we're back in the metropolis. So we're nearly back to the car park. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or like, and do make a comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a super walk today. We thought we'd do our last end bit by the nature reserve. I hope you found the little trip round Romsey uh, interesting. Certainly, if you're coming to these parts, well worth a look round the town. There's so many uh, uh, amazing aspects to look at. Speaking of which, we're going to head back and find ourselves a cup of tea somewhere. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.